this could like apply to like a real world situation. The biggest thing I mean, really like I mentioned this a little bit yesterday is right angle, right triangles show up all over the place. Um, I mean construction is a huge spot for them but I mean you look around and right angles are like and even right triangles um, are used in lots of different things that you could see. So knowing a measurement of that could be useful in a lot of different ways. So um, they give you these two values, so we need to find the third value. But obviously, this has to be our C. So this is either A or B. Now, it's a little bit annoying to square these um, decimals, so thank goodness for a calculator that allows us to just do that very easily. Now, something like this, we won't um, want to simplify a radical because it's already a decimal. And I would suggest trying not to do much rounding. So one of the things when I do this, I try to keep as much of my <coughs> sorry, as much of my calculator as I can. It's only your class that my voice does not swear. Um, so it's 96.04. 179.56. So don't do too much rounding yet. Like, so don't like say, oh, I'm gonna call that 190 or 179. Point six, like rounding off too much um, is really going to cause your answer to be enough different that makes you nervous that you did something wrong. So now I'm going to subtract that, and a lot of times I just leave whatever's in my calculator, so I have less kind of typing to do. So I get x squared equals eighty-three point five two. Now I already can tell that I'm going to take the square root of this, and it's going to be around nine some point something because the square root of 81 is 9. So just knowing that my answer is going to make some sort of sense. Now, one of the things I want to show you guys, um, 3, 9. So depending on your rounding, like how many decimal points you need to go to. So like if you're look, rounding to the hundredths place, that's the second decimal, this 3 would actually become a 4. So it kind of depends what they asked us to round to, which they didn't here. Um, I do want to show you guys something, though, on your calculator, that if you haven't used um, this on your calculator, you're kind of, it's kind of a missed opportunity. So let me show you um, something that works really nicely. Get this well enough that you guys can see it. Sometimes it lights it to be dark and then it brightens it up. Well, okay, let's see what we can do here. So we had, um, it was. Okay, so when you guys do this in your calculator, something like this, rather than having to retype that, I don't know if you guys use this feature. 
turn your calculator. So by kind of this goofy decimal, or sometimes when the decimals are super, super long, one of the things you can do, rather than having to like type in that 83.52 or remember it, you can use um, this answer feature in your calculator. So they get a square root. Rather than typing that 83.52 in, I know I'm trying to switch the lights around and see if we can get that to show up better. So there's this little button, and most of you guys have it on your button. It says answer here. Um, it probably is on everyone's calculator around the same spot. So you hit second, answer. And what that does is it takes the previous answer and puts it in there for you. Now, I know that's like two less button pushes, but when you have a really, really long decimal and you want to use it for something, you don't have to retype it or you don't have to memorize that number or write it down. Um, you could just have it take the previous, so whatever is here, it's going to put that right there for you. And like I said, it works really nicely when we have a really, really long decimal, and I don't want to retype it, but I want to be as exact as possible. Like if I was going to do something with that number, I want to square it. So if I want to take that 9.138 and square it, I don't have to retype that. <laughs> then it gives me this. Again, if your calculator gives you a, a fraction, you can use the, um, there's a the little equivalent button. Those of you guys have this calculator. So kind of getting used to some of those things your calculator can do, because it really is kind of a slick tool, and it saves time again when we talk about things like the ACT, where it's a time test, or um, you're just someone who likes to be efficient. Um, using kind of some of those little tools are really, really helpful on on the calculator. So um, don't be afraid to play around with it a little bit to see um, some options of things they can do. You can't really break it unless you don't take care of it. But. All right, so um, we're starting our new chapter here, or next section here. Um, new, new, um, new month is what it is. December. So, um, some practices simplifying again, kind of our favorite thing there. Um, so, these first couple want you to simplify. Remember that means no decimals. We're, we're we need those. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Michael looks confused with his homework there in front of him, and I was like, yeah, sorry. I don't have the taxis out at home, so you guys just either have or put some bowl punches in Sorry. <laughs> Big copiers, not for things. So, the whole punches and the little one doesn't. Okay. There we go. How you something to write on? Again, so the simplifying the radicals. Some of you guys, your calculator does that for you. Others of you. You need a little bit of help. Talk about it. And then the last two are talking about how to square a square root. So um, these last two are something we're going to see today in our notes. So um, thinking about what would happen there when that you do. 
And if you guys are looking at that at all in the homework, um, you can cross off that whole top line on the homework. We already did that, so um, we're just doing the bottom part. I think last year we must have had like a short day, or remember those short, was it short Wednesdays or Fridays we had? Um, those of you guys who are sophomores. Um, so we must have had something that we had a really short lesson that day. Okay, so square root of 40. Now again, if this is something that you still haven't gotten down, well, first of all, if you don't have a calculator that simplifies it for you, sorry. Um, but remember, simplifying the square root just means we're trying to pull out any perfect squares that go into it. So um, we want to simplify, I think you crossed off the wrong part there, but I meant this for the homework here. <laughs> but you can have this one if you want a new one. Sorry, look, what are you doing? Sorry, I meant the homework, the first line you can cross off. I apologize. Um, so we want to find perfect squares that go into 40. And so like 4 goes into 40. So 4 square root of 10. Or square root of 4 square root of 10, sorry. Square root of 4, we know how to do that. That's 2. Square root of 10, I don't know that off the top of my head. There's no number that times itself will equal 10, no whole number. So we have 10. Now you might ask yourself, can't you simplify that further? And you actually can't. Um, 10 is 2 times 5, and those both aren't perfect squares. So we just leave it this way. And again, if you don't have this kind of calculator, you can always swap out with me why you guys are in here. Um, I just need them in my classroom to, to stay in my classroom. So. Um, if you want to use one while you're in here, that's fine. Um, and so simplifying that radical is just pulling out that perfect square. Now in 18, what perfect square goes into 18? Our perfect squares. Perfect square goes into 18. Nine. Yeah. These are our list of like our first five perfect squares. So nine. So it's square root of nine times the square root of two. Because nine times two is 18. And square root of nine, we know that's three. So we can take the square root of nine and make it three. Square root of two isn't on our list, so we leave it as the square root of two. That would be simplified, three square roots of two. Yep. Yeah, because otherwise that meant that you took the square root of 4. Um, you know, like, since we took the square root, that's why it's gone. Good question, though. Yeah, I almost always, that's probably the most common mistake I'll get. I'll have a student that has two square roots of 3. And again, it's got to be this equivalent expression there. All right, now 3 and 4, we're going to see this a little bit today. And hopefully this is something you kind of already know, but if not, it's, it's really not... Like the first one, especially, is not that difficult. What happens when you square a square root? Anyone know? What is square root of six squared? What's that? Yeah, it just cancels out. So the square root and square are what we call inverses of each other. So they're opposites. So they kind of just cancel each other out. So they go away. So this would just be six. That works really nicely when it's just a square root. However, number four is not as easy. This is not just, I don't know, I don't know what you think this maybe is, three times five, I don't know. But a squared, remember, means to multiply something by itself. Now, we could have done this over here. It's square root of six times the square root of six 
which is the square root of 36, which is just 6. So, I mean, there's lots of different ways to get there. This one, we actually have to think about multiplying it by itself. Or if you put this into your calculator, you have to use parentheses. So when I'm multiplying these, I'm going to multiply 3 times 3, which I get 9. Then I have square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, which is really just 5. The square root of 25 is a perfect square, which is 5. So we end up with 9 times 5, which is 45. So something like this, if you're trying to do that in your calculator, make sure you guys use the parentheses. If you don't use parentheses, it'll do it wrong. It'll just square the square root, and oh, we don't want to do that. So both of them have to be squared. Any questions there? So we're using all of those ideas today and what we're going to be doing. Now today's lesson isn't that much more complicated than what we've already talked about. We're basically talking about the Pythagorean theorem a little bit more, but just kind of backwards. Or what happens when something isn't a squared plus b squared equals c squared? It doesn't work. What kind of triangle is it? So, um, so we'll write that out down here. So we're going to determine if a triangle is a right triangle today. So we're kind of not being told it's necessarily a right triangle. So this is saying if this is the case, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then it forms a right triangle. Now, a really easy way to know that is using like our Pythagorean triples from last time. However, again, you don't have to know those or use those. The um, biggest thing is C has to be the longest side, so don't forget about that. So C is our longest side. So it asks us if these three different triangles form a right triangle. So we're going to check and see, do they form a right triangle? Let's actually start with letter B, by the most straightforward one. Which side has to be C? The 14 has to be C. So we're going to label C as 14. Then the A and B don't really matter, so I'm just going to call these A and B. And we're going to check and see, does it form a right triangle? So it's basically they're giving us all the sides and they're saying, is it right? So this is more a question mark. Is this equal? So we're just checking if it's a triangle. Or a right triangle, sorry. So 14 squared is 196, I believe. So 221 does not equal 196, so this would not be a right triangle. Now, is this a triangle at all? Do you guys remember how we can tell if something forms a triangle? How do we know if those three sides would form a triangle? Do you remember that? Yeah. Right. So 10 plus 11 is more than 14. So it is a triangle. It's just not necessarily a right triangle. Now, when we get to the back side of the notes, we're actually going to be able to find out what type of triangle it's going to be. Like, is it acute or obtuse? Um, but this one is not a right triangle, but does form a triangle because what um, what he's saying was that 10 plus 11 is bigger than 14. So it is a triangle, but it's not a right one. So let's go back to 
with letter A. How do I know what my C is in this case? How do I know what C is? I see some of you guys going to your calculator. What are you guys doing that those of you guys are checking? What are you guys checking? Dawson, what did you check? Uh, checking what the actual value is. Yeah, he's checking the value of the square root of 61. Because maybe off the top of his head, he doesn't know that. Most of us probably don't. I have an approximate value because I know it's in between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. So I know it's about 7 point something, right? 7 point, it's like higher. Um, so we can know that this has to be the longest side. So we can check this is like about 7. So this is going to be our C. 7 point something, right? So we're going to check and see, does this form a right triangle? So then we have our A and B. So 5 squared plus 6 squared, does that equal the square root of 61 squared? Now notice, I did use my 7 in there. 7 is approximate. It's about 7 point something. I don't want to use that. I'm going to use the square root of 61 squared because that's exact. So I want to be more precise with this. So I have 25, I have 36. Square root of 61 squared is just 61. If I add these two, that happens to be 61 as well. So yes, this one is a right triangle. Any questions there? All right, let's look at letter C. Which side length has to be my C value? Let's figure it out. Yeah, what do you think? Eight. Eight. Did you figure out what four square roots of three is? Yeah. It's about six. Six point, yeah, so not eight. <laughs> So it's in between there. So eight actually has to be our longest side. So I would ask that if you guys have a calculator in front of you, which you hopefully should, put four square roots of three in your calculator. Figure that out as a decimal. If you don't know how to enter that in your calculator, then let's figure out how to put that in. It's really saying four times the square root of three, if you're curious, or a lot of your calculators will allow you just to write. You don't need the times, it assumes that. And so it's about six point, Nine, three. So obviously it's not the longest side, or maybe not obviously, but it isn't. So our eight has to be our C. So the other two would be our A and B. So we're gonna do four squared plus the four square roots of three squared. And we're checking to see does that equal eight squared? And checking to see if this is a right triangle. Four squared and eight squared are easy. But four square roots of three squared is I have to multiply it by itself. So I have to do four times four, which is 16. Square root of three times the square root of three is the square root of nine, which is also just three. And some of you guys are just putting in your calculator, and that's fine. So you should get uh, 48. So again, if you're not getting 4 squared to 3 squared equals 48, you have to figure out what you're doing wrong with your calculator. So a lot of this is just making sure your calculator is giving you guys the right answer. So we end up with 64. 64 equals 64. So yes, this one's right. All right, well actually, why don't we grab um, whiteboards? We'll do some practice with Pythagorean theorem. Um, so if the middle two rows want to grab them first. Okay. 
guys want to go ahead over here? And then um, we'll ask your bugs to go. Yes or no? That way I know you're not just 
Because if you say no and it's yes, then I, you just know that it's your answer. So. Remember, you might have to check which one C is. Yep. You have to do a little bit of work to figure out which one C is. Unless you just know, you might just know. number 57 not 52 oh. going to be smaller than 11. Hopefully it's some, something you know. If you have to check it, it's fine. Square root of 57 is like 7 point something because um, it's in between the two square roots, 49 and 64. So kind of be able to approximate that a little bit. It's not a bad thing to know how to do. Um, so A and B, it doesn't matter which one you call A or B. And so again, we get, end up with 64. Four. Square root of 57 squared is 57. This is 121. So we end up with 121 equals 121. So that works out well. All right, let's actually change gears and go back to a little bit with um, just doing, um, finding the missing side. So. I guess I'm just going to say find the missing side. I'll probably call it X most of the time. But. Um, so. All right, so find the value of X. So this kind of takes us back to yesterday a little bit. So you might. I need a calculator. And I don't think this one can simplify, so you can just leave it as a. Uh, let me just double check the decimal. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Michael, you're good. Yes. Well, not quite. Make sure you have, you're looking for B or A or B, not C. You know C already. I don't know if that's what. So, guys, we know that. Five has to be our C value because it's across from the right angle. And then that means X is either um, A or B. It doesn't matter which one. So if I have X squared plus 2 squared, that means equal 5 squared. X squared plus 4 means equal 25. Move that 4 over. So X squared is going to equal 21. I'm going to take the square root of each side. So x is going to be the square root of 21, which then you find out that's like about 4.58, I think, or 4.6-ish. Right, 
Let's try another one. Sorry, I didn't know. Find that missing side there. It's what we yeah, what we did for our yeah. So you're trying to find that missing either A, B, or C. Yes, good job. Okay, careful. This, this is C because it's across from the radio. So you put that as C. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Square those. Yeah. Yeah, but you leave all squares at them. Yes. Yes, good job. Yes. Yeah. 
Good work. Nice. All right. So you want to take your board back, clean them back. There you go. Is there some sort of like club here with the sock? Yeah. Yeah. about what happens if it's not a right triangle. What other type of triangle could it like be? So could it be acute or obtuse? So, so these are called um, the inequality theorems. Basically, what happens when they're not equal? So the word inequality means not equal. So we're going to talk about the two circumstances where it's not equal, it's either greater or less. So um, in this first one, hopefully you realize, realize that this does look like um, an acute triangle and the other one looks like an obtuse. So I drew them that way intentionally. Now, don't go anything based off of just like looks, obviously. We want to make sure we're um, doing the math behind it. So if I'm doing this problem, if a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared, so if these two squared is greater than the third side, which is the longest side, then it has to be an acute triangle. B squared is greater than C squared, then it has to be an acute triangle. And hopefully you realize that the opposite would be the case for obtuse. So if A squared plus B squared is less than C squared, again where C is the longest side, then the triangles of twos. So if it's not right, it could be an acute or obtuse triangle. We can figure that out, out still using Pythagorean theorem, but it just requires us to like do a little bit more work with it, like greater than, less than. One of the things I want to remind you guys though, so this is kind of a, from a few chapters ago now, I think. So what I want you guys to do is don't get this confused with the triangle inequality. So this is square. This is telling them it's the cuter of twos or right. But remember, in order to be a triangle in general, the two shorter sides have to be bigger than the longest, longest side, which is what Drake reminded us of um, a few minutes ago. So these all look very, very similar. But there's, this is just determining if it's a triangle or not. So we have a couple examples on the bottom, determining if, first of all, it's a triangle, and then if it is, then is it right acute or obtuse? 
So again, if you guys didn't hear me before, um, the top part of the homework you can cross off because we actually did this part already. I said last class, um, last year, it must have been a really short class. So you can skip that part. All right, so we have side lengths of 7, 15, and 21. So the first question, is this a triangle, yes or no? How do I know if it's a triangle at all? Yeah, so 7 plus 15 is greater than 21. 22 is greater than 21, so yes. So yes, it's a triangle. So we at least know that already. But then we have to check, is it right or acute or right, acute or obtuse? So this is where we take it in square. This is where we're trying to figure out um, what type of triangle it is. So which side is C? Which side has to be C? 21. So there's our C. So we're going to do 7 squared plus 15 squared compared to 21 squared. So I'm going to leave a little box, a little space there. So I don't know what that is yet. I don't know if it's equal, greater than, less than. So we have our 49. We have our 225. And then 21 squared is 441. Add those together, I have 279 and 441. So clearly 441 is greater. I try to point out that these two are very different outcomes here. This just told us it was a triangle. Now this is telling us it's what? Obtuse. Now, just to help you guys out a little bit, um, thinking about the idea of being like maybe a little confused about this, the obtuse, remember when those two sides open up bigger, my hands go further apart so that C value is also longer. So it's kind of a good way to remember that. So this would be an obtuse triangle. All right. And then letter B here, or example three, sorry. First of all, is it a triangle? Four point five plus twenty is greater than twenty point five, so yes, it's a triangle. And then, is it a right acute or obtuse triangle? So again, our C has to be our longest side. Yep. I know the triangle part of it is tough because we kind of throw two inequalities into the same section for inequality rules. Now 4.5 squared, try something you have to grab a calculator for. That's 20.25. 20 squared is 4,000, right? 400, sorry, it was 4,000. 400. And then 20.5 squared is 420. 0.25. So this one actually ends up being equal, which means what kind of triangle is this? It's a right triangle. All right? Questions? Okay, so we'll give you guys the rest of the time to work on homework. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to do corrections and a retake, let me know. Um, if you have to do your test still, please come in here to get that taken care of. Um, and then homework is just the 444 part. We've already done the other part. If you look at that, it's not going to look the same. So, this, um, yeah. Did I make corrections? Yes. Let me write it down.